So my name is Markus Bornheim and uh, I'm with Avaya. Avaya, as you might know, we are into communications. Any kind of element of communication, real-time communication, is what we are very much focused on. And I came across um, the use case of drones a couple of years back. I think it was in the Budapest conference when I had the real first conversations. And I think uh, one of the persons sitting in the room, uh, we were on the boat uh, at the uh, river for the evening and they were talking about what they do with drones in Iceland and that triggered some of the ideas uh, with me as well. So we started talking, having some conversations and I would like to give you some insight of what we believe where Avaya as a communication specialist can add capabilities to drone services and drones management. So since a couple of years we see that the ENA has been started doing drones research work, creating a drones users group. It's become a, probably one of the most active um, groups inside the ENA over the last two to three years. Um, so that's, that, that's a given and that's currently happening. Where we see the challenge currently is, and I've had a couple of conversations already today, is, well, how with flying the drone do we actually transmit the video or the shots taken by the drone into command and control? Um, and, and this is the insight that we take along when we think about, well, what could we do as a communication specialist into drone services? So there's a couple of drone scenarios uh, that we are currently thinking about. And um, the key question is, how do we really feed the footage from the drone into some consumable format that can be used inside command and control rooms, crisis control centers, and so on. And of course, there's a very direct approach, which you can put your hands on on our booth, where we connect the drone with an HDMI cable into a video conferencing system. That was the first approach that was triggered by the conversation with the Icelandic team two, we, two years back. The more advanced approach from my perspective is consider the drone being a connected element anyhow, while it's an Internet of Things kind of story where the drone is equipped uh, with transmission capabilities through 4G or 5G networks to come. And the advanced plus scenario for me is when we are not just talking about connectivity, but when we are talking about the drone becoming an integral part of the emergency response chain, being completely automated and connected in that environment. And that is the proposition that we believe that we can bring to the market together with software partners that do more uh, activities in the space of drones management in here. So, Let's look at the operational challenges when we think about that basic approach. You have your drone carrying case. On the other hand, you have a connectivity case and you carry this into the field. You maybe have a 4G router uh, and you can send the drone's feed immediately from the remote control of the drone's pilot into a conferencing environment, which is really, really helpful. Um, because you do not have to use any smartphone consumer apps uh, that we are currently seeing out there, being in a more reliable environment then and not consuming the power of the smartphone itself, draining power, uh, reducing flight times and so on. So the video feed that we are bringing into that conferencing platform has probably less delay than going through, uh, so let's say, YouTube or Facebook live streaming platforms that we see are out there and are used for, let's say, more private purposes as well. So video conferencing is more close to real time in that case. Um, but what we see as probably one of the biggest assets in that kind of a video conferencing approach, making the drone become a participant in a video conference, is really about enabling the drone to become an endpoint and allowing the drone pilot and all other stakeholders to communicate throughout the flight with each other, being, let's say, influential on how the flight is going to happen. So that's probably one of the biggest things that we can think about in, in, in uh, a drone-based communication and communication-enabled solution. So one idea was, well, thinking about this more operational task, we can create a kit, and we are currently thinking about whom we are going to do this with, that has all of the video capabilities that we show on our stand already embedded into a ruggedized kit, a little bit, let's say, proof to rough environments, um, where we can deliver this with the drone that is carried in a box on the back of the truck 
uh, onto the field and then being launched. So the beauty of such kind of a video kit is that everyone who is around the drone pilot is not forced to look at a 5-inch screen or a 10-inch screen of a tablet device, but you can use that 24-inch video kit already for the on-ground staff to have a much better overview of what is happening up in the air. Uh, be beyond that, we are also thinking that that kind of secured approach being part of an uh, encrypted video conference is much more appropriate for public safety and emergency services. So these kind of approaches are, let's say, the tactical approach with these two boxes to carry along into the field and launch the drone up there. And it's basically looking like this. You launch the drone, the drone is going to hover over the area with a radio transmission linked down to the drone operator or the pilot with its remote control. And as the drone is flying, uh, we are going to feed the video that is picked up by the drone uh, during the flight directly into the video conferencing solution. And that video conferencing solution is a kind of a standard approach. You can have the standard clients within a browser, or you can have a client that you might roll out, or you can have direct integrations into your most favorite command and control applications in here. So that solution allows you to view, to distribute, to record, and to see that picture for analytics afterwards. So quite a straightforward approach of sharing it instantly and immediately with all the stakeholders that might be in need uh, of that kind of capability. So why video conferencing? What do we believe is the benefit of video conferencing in a drone-based environment? First of all, uh, like you see that, uh, so the video conference is something that can easily communicate with a cloud-based service. That cloud-based service then can be consumed from any time and any place around the globe with everyone who is in need of looking at the drone's feed. So you invite people, like you get invitations to your corporate video or web conference calls day in, day out, by sending SMS messages, email messages with just a link in, and everyone who has got that link uh, and has got the credentials to access the conference uh, can do this immediately, independently from the device that you're using. Could be a smartphone, could be a PC, or could even be a conferencing system that is already part of your crisis and control center where, where you might have invested into video conferencing a couple of dollars in the past years and you might want to reuse that as well without any additional effort on that. So the, the interesting part of video conferencing is that kind of solution is taking care of the endpoints, capabilities, and at the bandwidth available where the endpoint is. So people with mobility aspects, they are in the field, and you might be on any network from 3G with limited bandwidth, 4G, quite good bandwidth, future 5G networks per superb bandwidth, in the command and control room, you might be connected to a LAN environment, you might be on a Wi-Fi environment, so the conditions to receive the video is very different for anyone, and the video conferencing solution is taking care of that, of transcoding to the different clients according to the needs automatically. So that bandwidth management is, is, is key for us. But we also believe that within the security of a video conferencing solution, well, that's a, an appropriate kind of deployment in terms of access, who can see the feed, and can someone intrude into the feed uh, from, from externally, why we believe that for public safety this is an appropriate approach. So that was the basic scenario. Still remember the carrying case, drone, and your communications equipment on the other side. Moving into the more advanced scenario, we would equip that drone or we would need a drone equipped with a network connectivity, a SIM card, to register to a mobile network and to consume the bandwidth and communication capabilities from network. And the advanced plus scenario, this is really where we see lo the long-term goal for many scenarios here, beyond visual line of sight flights, um, where you could control the drone remotely um, from the command and control center um, to re retrieve the information, the situational data instantly into these environments with every stakeholders. And at the end, this would basically lead up into a scenario what I would call drone as a service. So taking into account that if there were such kind of a drone as a service platform which has high geographical coverage, you could have multiple kind of users. So the private person user, 
wanting to have a photo from the roof after a severe sun thunderstorm, just logging onto the platform, requesting the drone, taking a picture, getting an announcement, drone is coming in 10 minutes, want to join the drone flight whilst it's approaching, and then you look onto your roof. And if there is an operator-assisted drone flight, you could even say, oh, can you please zoom a little bit more closer to this or that area of the roof? So that's the private drone as a service approach. On the other side, we of course have the agencies, have public safety, who have different needs in terms of response in drones as a service. So I need that drone within 10 minutes, wherever you are. And I probably need not only one drone, but a fleet of drones, because I need to cover a longer period, a day or two, to be constantly monitored in areas of large devastation, floodings or whatsoever, when you would need to coordinate your drones continuously throughout the flight and get an access to the data that the drone is producing. So that kind of drone as a service is something we are partnering with a company that we know very well from the e-call deployments during the past five years in Europe. Um, Ocon have been known for their e-call modems that we have been working with them for being uh, e-call enabled in the public safety answering point. And they started to work on that drone as a services platform uh, because they have seen large customer demand on that in the past. So the platform is a reality and it's in, uh, in proof of concept right now. And us as a VIA being focused on real-time communications in here, what we did over the past couple of years, we, are, we were expanding the capabilities of communication from the phone, from the PC, with having some, let's say, phone capabilities or video capabilities uh, into the communication enablement of the Internet of Things. So really talking about connected and networked devices becoming part of communication chains. And I personally do see a drone being an adoption of the Internet of Things topic uh, with specific capabilities, especially when you make it a communication endpoint. So merging these two capabilities, the drone management and drone control platform with the collaboration environment that we can provide, we are resulting in a communication-enabled drone as a services platform, which is open but yet a secure framework, open in terms of standard web services to add other services, external services onto, accessible from different stakeholders with different needs at any time through the tools that we provide, extensible in terms of additional services to be added. Just imagine, uh, everyone is talking about AI and analytics in these days, spe specifically to video capture, video uh, signals that we receive. This platform should be open by default to attach any third-party analytics tool into that. And it could be an integral component into any smart city approaches that we're seeing coming up in, in many European large cities around the place. So the Ocon Urban Air Mobility Services is that kind of modular approach where you have everything from registering and identifying drones to become part of that drone services network, flight planning and approval with air traffic control, where organize a flight, creating a flight round with its waypoints, and then ask for approval for that waypoint flight uh, instantly with air traffic control if needed, capacity management and detection of multiple drones, um, and avoidance of collisions is something that we can do through that platform as well. And in the end, uh, complete integration into air traffic management with real-time view of the statuses in here. So these are a few screenshots, and I would like to invite you to see us at the Avaya stand if you are interested to see more of that platform. We do have access to it right now, really to show you how we can plan and manage missions from this. Uh, creating flights, creating missions, executing them, and giving you an impression of what that future might look like. But it's not only about that inner core of the drone management platform. As I was saying, the core functional requirement elements in here are, well, controlling the drone, especially in a BV loss uh, scenario beyond visual line of sight, managing the media and the data that the drone with its sensors and cameras is creating during the flight and how to make that accessible to others and where to store that media and also adding analytics, artificial intelligence to this. So this is what I would consider the inner core of that drone management platform. But as you might know us, we have been working with public safety answering points on the 112 side uh, in the past. So our idea is, well, I think we need to extend 
that range of capabilities to elements that will need to happen before the drone really lifts off. So engaging the right drone uh, from a, let's say, customer access point of view. Who are the customers with which specific requests for that drone service are they coming? And which drone do we need to select in order to, to serve this request? Not every drone is equipped with a thermal camera, but in a drone's network, you can choose the ones that are and that are appropriate for that purpose. Or even earlier in the chain, it's, well, are we aware about the event that need us to create a drone service to be invoked here. Where is that wildfire out there that people are reporting, calling into the public safety answering point from their mobile phone? Oh, I see a wildfire. Oh, where is that? Well, I do not know. I'm not where the wildfire is, but I see the smoke in the distance. So would you want to just please lift up your phone, click on the link in the SMS that we just sent you, and then the camera is opening and we detect the photo and we detect the direction. And if you just consider right now, you receive multiple calls for the same incident, you will have multiple calls, multiple directions, triangulation from smartphone, and that's a reality in these days as well. So we can show that at the booth as well to detect the remote incident location, which is the place where the drone is going to fly, not where the caller is in that scenario. But on the other hand, after the event, we are also taking care from a customer services perspective uh, the further engagement of all stakeholders. So who has to see what the drone can see in that moment? And when should the person see that? Instantly, which would be the officers on the ground uh, or approaching the scene, from tablet or smartphone devices to have immediate insight. Or even if you think about uh, large floodings, you might want to have a first drone flight and might want to inform uh, the Ministry of Interior, the Prime Minister or whomever. And you address an invitation to that person to be part of the drone scene immediately and to be part of the collaborative framework that is in use afterwards to provide access to the drone video feeds, to provide access to the high resolution photos that have been taken and to the sensor data that has been created. And this is exactly where Avaya comes into the play to do the, let's say, outside engagement and the customer services aspects of that kind of engagement of a drone services platform. So looking into this, how would that platform look like? The collaborative environment is connected through API services to the drone as a services platform, which in fact is harmonizing across all different drone vendors to have a single environment to control and to manage independently from the manufacturer of the drone, the different drone services, and to feed the data into that platform. And on the other hand, we create um, software interfaces for users. And we know we, have, we will have different users and different stakeholders in here. Some of them professional users, command and control staff, public safety agencies that would want to not only have access to the video feed but want to remotely control the drone's flight, want to have access to the mission, want to hold the drone for a minute in an automated flight, just stop here and took the, take the camera to the little bit more northwest to see what is happening in that place or the, let's say, rather informative viewers, the spectators, uh, which just want to have access to the video feed. Uh, and below that, we would foresee a third API layer where we would communicate with external services, as I was saying, artificial intelligence, video imagery, uh, detection, um, and, and all of that, workflow, uh, business process, rules engines that would make use of the data, analyze the data, and create action from that data to be fed back then through the collaboration environment for a more perfect and automated engagement. And even bringing in edge computing is something we can think about here. So many drones have payload capabilities, just think it can carry a small computer with a very powerful engine to, during the flight, uh, detect the pictures, detect the video feed, and uh, create insights from. I see a body uh, on uh, the floor, but I do not have to transmit the whole picture or the whole video stream because I'm limited in bandwidth. So you can do this with onboard uh, um, uh, computing and edge computing in these kind of environments, which would be part of the overall scenario. 
So this is the standard emergency services chain, which some of you might be aware of, that ENA has been um, published a couple of years back. The call is being created from someone dialing 112. It's going into the public safety answering point. Public safety answering point is selecting as creating data from that call. Where are you? What do you see? Then classifying the case and making a dispatch decision before the intervention team is going out. So how will that chain probably change if we would have drones being part of the emergency response chain? So the drone itself, once in the air, could create additional data, additional situational context uh, and insight that might have an influence on the data collection. Well, you know, we have done the data collection already as part of the call. Or it might have an influence on whom are we going to dispatch if we only knew what the drone is seeing. So I think we have to rethink that emergency services chain, um, putting the drone as a dispatchable resource into the command and control applications. The drone is lifting off, is flying to the place where we need it, and then sending that additional data, well, to re-qualify the data, to add additional data in here, to maybe also reclassify the case in a second approach, and sending additional resources according to the new requirements. So I do believe that we have to rethink emergency services chain in the future when the IoT, when drones and other elements will be coming addressable and accessible in that kind of chain where we can take the chance to adjust and recalibrate emergency response. So this was it basically for me. Thank you very much for your attention and I think we are very close to the end of the session. If there's any questions, I'm still around here for a few minutes or see me at the Avaya booth later. Thank you very much.